Hi there, Taurus. I hope you guys are doing well. I'm going to go ahead and do another reading for you. These are energetic reads. They can be about relationships, relationships to yourself. It depends. So let's see what comes through for the sign of Taurus. Your energies, dear guides, be present for the sign of Taurus with me. Help me be a clear conduit for the messages that need to come through. Share with me energy that Taurus might find helpful. Poised. I mean, more for Taurus. <clears throat> I'll have to clear my throat in a minute. I've been like, I don't think it's, um, <clears throat> I don't think I'm sick. I just feel like I need to clear my throat. And rather than cough on camera, I'm going to do that in a second. I'm going to pause this. <clears throat> Masking my pain. Oh, good lordy. Hang on, Taurus. <clears throat> Thank you, Taurus. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, yeah, it might also be the change in seasons or something. I'm not sure. So poised energy and masking my pain. This is really interesting energy just because what it feels like, Taurus, is that these are things that we need to look at. These are pains, these are addictions, these are reoccurring bumps in our road that seem to be on a roundabout, you know? It's like we keep repeating these experiences, but we're also, you know, not looking under the hood. We're not seeing why we're doing something here. Um, and to be poised, this poised card, it indicates energy of being ready for change. You know, being ready for things to take a different direction here. <clears throat> and so, why do we mask pain, right? I'm afraid to get to the deeper aspects of it. You might want to check out Aries reading. Um, that was really big and really beautiful and very revealing in a lot of ways. Um, Masking our pain. You may be having to put on a happy face or trying to like assimilate to something to be present for something. And it's like you're also not really in it. You're not really with it. You're not really wanting to be present for it. And so it's like you're masking the energy of your true feelings to remain in something or to uphold something or to proceed and push on towards something. Let's get into this energy for you, Taurus. Show me energy for the sign of Taurus. What is this energy for? And you could be dealing with somebody that is masking their pain. The Queen of Cups, Taurus. Cancer, Pisces, Scorpio energy. This Queen of Cups is a beautiful energy, though, just because it says compassion self-worth, kindness, acceptance. Um, if we're having any issues with looking under the hood or dealing with the pain and masking our problems through a strong, you know, <laughs> I'm so strong, you know, I've got it together. It's like, but the inner world is like in turmoil. The Queen of Cups says, love yourself. Be kind to yourself. Be compassionate towards yourself. For some of you, I will say, go check out the Aries reading. Go check it out. It's pretty good. I, If I say myself. <laughs> if I can say so myself, I do. It is good. Um, and here it's saying we have compassion. And sometimes we can have compassion for so many situations and so many people and so many scenarios in this world that like other people would not know how to do it. And it's like somehow, Taurus, you have that compassion. You have that patience with an understanding and seeing things with a clarity that others can't. It's like you're willing to stick with hard things to understand the inner workings of things. And that's a lot to like bite off. And you guys do it. You know, in a way, and I'm going to say this through symbology, but it's like you are the beast of burden. 
You will saddle yourself with the burdens of others because you know that there is light at the end of the tunnel, because you know that everything is achievable with work, with effort, and with your own dignity. You know, here with this Queen of Cups, it says, go within, be compassionate, especially if you're dealing with people who are masking their pain, you know? You may have somebody coming into your life who is not able to see that part of themselves, and you do so clearly. And it's important for you to have compassion with that, but it's also important for you to stay poised within your own nature so that you can receive messages in your own nature, in your own right, and your your internal compass, your high priestess, your inner knowing is not overridden by somebody else's need. That is the distinction of compassion. Because when we create a self-sacrificial position for ourselves, that is when we lose compassion. By having faulty compassion for others, maybe it's not faulty, maybe it's just overgiving to others, it brings a sense of lack within ourselves and we don't hold ourselves in a higher regard. see where it comes <laughs> sideways again all right that's okay um i feel here taurus like with the ace of cups here the ace of cups sure it can be a love offer it can be emotional expression but oftentimes it's going to talk about your spiritual cup being filled and here what happens when you drop a cup what happens when it go on its side it goes on its side it spills it spills but the problem with this is it's constantly spilling here, okay? And so when we give out so much to other people and we're just like an endless fountain, there will be a day, because it will happen to every fountain, no matter where, but in time, every fountain will dry up, okay? So it's saying, yes, people, especially, I do want to say this, especially if you are somebody who is a counselor, who is somebody who works for other people in like an emotional sense, in a, in a therapy sense, um, in a health profession sense, you also may be like burnt out and it's like you're masking that energy and it's really requ requiring you to feed your, fill your cup. You know, and here it almost feels like you can't escape the cycle of just like pouring your energy out towards situations where people aren't ready to heal entirely or where we aren't ready to heal entirely. Nobody's ever going to be entirely healed, but sometimes we have to make grand gestures to actually achieve some level of healing. We have to saddle ourselves with that beast of burden energy and take things on. And you can lead a horse to water. You can't make them drink. You know, you can't, you can't. You know, and so people fill their own cup and it feels here that some of you are needing to fill your own cup. Some of you, if we're having any addiction issues, we're needing to empty that cup out and refill it with something that's actually more wholesome, more healthy. I don't know, I feel though for some of you, like if you are known to have this very sweet side of yourself or you're known to be a giving person or that is your business, that is your currency, that is what you deal with on a day-to-day -day basis, you know, in healthcare, mental health, emotional health, whatever it is, you are seen as somebody that's very good at it. And in a way that almost attracts more to you. And so it's saying before you accept more, Deal with the energy that you need to replenish. Feed your body, feed your mind, feed your heart. You have the Page of Pentacles here. This is a good card. This is saying the energy that you are giving to things, it's growing. You have a passion for them. You have a dedication to situations that build growth. They build health. They build awareness. Um, this is, you know, if you're in a profession, this is something that you've built from the ground up and it's leading to a lot more here with the Ten of Pentacles. 
But just as easily as I can say that, I can also say the Ten of Pentacles is about inheritance. But inheritance, inheritance, Taurus, isn't just about money. When we're in families, we have the inheritance of lineage. We have the inheritance of problems and of viewpoints and of issues that are unresolved within bloodlines and family lines and karmic lines that persist. I highly suggest you guys checking out Aries reading, okay? Um, sometimes that is something to break. Sometimes those are not the types of inheritance energies that we want in our life, you know? And so being poised here is like rejoicing in the option to change, rejoicing in the ability to change because we look at it. We're poised and ready for that shift, Masking our pain is not ready. It's just putting on a happy face and like grinning and bearing it, but it's not ready. It's not comfortable. Show me more for Taurus. Page of Cups. This also is an interesting energy when we get involved with people within relationships as well, because oftentimes unresolved trauma, unresolved issues within us attracts like energies. That's not always bad. But sometimes it makes things more challenging. Here, though, it feels that you may be connecting, if we are dealing with people, it may be connecting friendship or love related, whatever it is. We're dealing with somebody that has perhaps mirrored issues, mirrored trauma, mirrored awareness here. So that's a good thing. That means that we are dealing with somebody at our own level at this point, and we're able to communicate freely with this person. We're able to achieve and attain and give and share with this person. Here with the Ace of Cups sideways, it can say, I'm not ready for a full relationship, but I'm also ready to express myself and share of myself. You know, and sometimes we get very confused by that because it's like, are you in or are you out? And that's not how love works. That's not how love works, especially if you're like <laughs> on dating sites and stuff like that, which is entirely predatory. That's like a playground for narcissists, you know, and, and trust me, everybody has narcissistic tendencies. It's it's self-aware it's when we build an understanding of self-awareness, when we realize we have those tendencies, that when we've struck gold, because we can regulate, we can see our patterns, right? It's the same with, you know, borderline personality disorders, attachment disorders, or, or attachment styles. It's all so much better harnessed through a level of self-awareness. So please understand that, yes, some narcissistic people do horrible things. They ruin lives. They ruin relationships. They ruin families. But sometimes when people are self-aware and they can catch themselves in those self-aggrandized, self-serving, you know, selfish nature energies, that's like half the battle. And I feel here that maybe we've experienced those things before with people. And so trusting is not so easy. But it's also something where it's like, I'm not going to be afraid of life and I'm not going to be afraid of connecting with people, but I do want to connect. And so I am making some effort here, even though I am not emotionally quite ready yet, I'm still making an effort here. I'm going to give myself that grace rather than just locking myself away in my tower and throwing away the key, you know. Here with the Page of Pentacles and the Page of Cups, I feel you have an energy, a symbiotic connection with somebody who also understands, who also gets it, who also wants a friend. I feel here that this is something where you can share of yourself, share of your knowledge, share of your wisdom, and laugh together, have fun together. This may also feel like a soul bond energy with this Ten of Pentacles. This may feel like an energy of friendship that is just like a divine partnership. You know, it doesn't always have to be romantic, you guys. I know people come to these readings for like romance and, you know, the love of my life and this and that. You're watching a general reading, you know. It's different when you have a personal reading. It's different when you have a different view. This can also talk about friendship that can grow. This is expression. It's nice. It's very simple. It's simple. It cuts away at all of like the eccentricities or not even eccentricities, all of the, all of like the mm, 
expectant underpinnings of dating and relationships and especially online stuff and like do they like me am I showing the right side of myself oh my profile picture needs to be a little bit more pretty what if I use a little bit more of a filter here what if I did this what if I acted a little bit nicer you know what if I like you know yeah that thing that they did wasn't that great and I don't like that behavior but I'll let it slide this time because I'm just getting to know them listen to what people present themselves as see what they do what are they saying? What are they, what are they showing you? And make your judgments from the initial phases. I like this energy because it says slow, steady, kind, friendly, nice, not rushed, not hurried, no pretenses. It just is. And that is a judgment that you can apply there. You get to make the rules, Taurus. I love that, but you get to make the rules when it comes to the people that you interact with. Don't be so ready to jump into something if you're not ready. Don't mask the discomfort of not feeling secure in yourself or not feeling ready for a connection. There's no rushing into things. And we know that with Taurus. Y'all don't rush into things. And if you do, you pay the price. We have the Three of Wands falling on poised. The Three of Wands is about patience and progress. It's saying the things that you put your effort towards, the direction that you choose to go in, you took a chance. And it's paying off slowly, slowly. And I love that with the Page of Pentacles and the Page of Cups because it says slowly this situation is progressing. Slowly this connection is progressing. Here I almost feel like this opportunity or this connection, Taurus, gives you a chance to actually release some of that pain, release some of the masking. It allows you to be free with somebody here where you can be silly, but also be honest about like the yucky parts, the hard parts, the things that like people don't talk about. But you know how you have those friends in your life? I hope you do. Where it's like, you can talk about the real shit. You can talk about like the, oh my God, I can't believe I did this. Oh my God, I can't believe I, you know, or this thing happened to me and I've never told anybody about this. But here we have an energy of kindred spirits. Here we have an energy of patience and progression. And so there is a certain level of emotional trust in this emotional bond being built. And it says, it's safe. And even if you feel unsafe, just go for it anyhow. What is it? What is it? You reveal something uncomfortable. Oops. That's life. The Seven of Cups coming out in reverse. It's falling on poised again. This is nice because it's making a decision. It's choice and action coming together. It's saying... You know what? I may not know how this situation is going to go, but I like it. And I'm going to try it and I'm going to keep playing with this person and not in like a Machiavell Machiavellian way, not a manipulative play. This is just being present with somebody where you can be free, where you can be childlike and open up and be free. And it doesn't come with the expectations. Children don't have expectations of each other. They just play. They just go and play. Some of us are robbed of that in our childhoods. Some of us don't ever get that experience. We're saddled with parents who are abusive. We're saddled with growing up too early because we've gotten abuse or we have these restrictive, rigid experiences that just shut us down as children. We have traumas that happen to us that are just horrible but they make such an impact that they shadow and foreshadow our lives moving forward. It's a burden that we have to bury or <laughs> we carry. And here it almost feels like we have to bury it because it's just shutting us down. One more energy, please, for this. For Taurus, please. One more. Two of Cups coming here. Oh, <laughs> absolutely. And it's followed with the Nine of Swords at the bottom of the deck. This is being afraid. It's having anxiety when it comes to potential things that make us feel bonds, getting close to somebody. 
sometimes we have these like beliefs that we have to show up like we know what we're doing and we have to show up like we are healed and we have to show up like you know I have a complete understanding of who I am I went to Harvard and blah 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 I'm almost hearing Beetlejuice because <laughs> now Beetlejuice is everywhere but you know when he's talking about like I went to Harvard blah 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 and I, I studied through the Black Plague and this it's almost like that spiel it's like saying the shit that actually happened <laughs> you know, trust it. So let, let me get a card on masking, masking pain, because I feel that that is something that we need to look at here. Show me masking my pain. For Taurus, show me masking my pain. Yeah, the three of pentacles coming out here. You have a crow. You have a little sparrow there too. Let's talk about the crow. Okay. Nine of swords at the bottom of the deck again. We're going to put that there because it's right there. And so it's really coming up here. Under the nine of swords is the three of swords. So there's a lot of pain here. And what we're trying to do is avoid it. But sometimes we have to look at it. We have to heal the pain with the star. We have to be present for that. But let's just leave this here for now. Uh, I don't mean to be talking down to you. I'm not talking down to you. It's just it's just piece by piece. Let's go. <clears throat> Masking the pain with the three of pentacles, Taurus. Let's talk about crows, okay? Crows, I can't remember which reading I did where a crow was present, but the energy was pay attention to the crow, okay? The crow sees people for who they are. If you mistreat a crow, right, they'll never forget you and they'll never forgive you. They'll haunt you. They'll pick at you. They'll send down a murder of crows to take you out, you know? But the thing about it is crows remember. Crows see what is. And here it's almost as if we have like a little crow or a little starling or whatever. I don't know. But it's like, the passing down of information here it's almost as if it's giving us an opportunity to create a connection through honesty creating a connection through healing and through peace to people that are on the same path working through the same type of imprinting but also connecting in a friendly way that kind of helps to buffer the pain associated and it does help you out of the darkness we have two people in that in that little dinghy, right? It's two people moving away from such pain. But it only happens when we assimilate. And the Nine of Swords being here twice, two people with multi, like very similar issues, you know. And if it's not that, it's just a it's just the message repeating itself that this is a very indelibly imprinted energy upon our lives and it's left us with a lot of heartache and a lot of pain it's left us in a, ravel a raveled mess here with this three of swords but it's saying through slow progression and trust and through the openness to create a bond through a level of love and kindness through finding unity within friendship there's a lot that can happen here. It's not that you're just catalytic energies with each other, but isn't it beautiful when we have friendships that are beautiful catalytic friendships with each other where it's like you didn't even expect it to happen, but healing, here it comes. You know, oh, you're talking about that? Well, let me talk about mine. It's not like trying to one-up the other person with our painful experiences, but it is opening a window. It's opening the door for some of that energy to get out to be shared, to bring light, to have somebody else's understanding and compassion. And if you don't have anybody in your life, be that small child that was arrested in its development. Pay attention to that child that needs your help. It needs your love. It needs your acceptance. And it needs to be seen by you. The whole point of shadow work is for things to be seen, to be lit up. And oftentimes shadow work is, is terribly uncomfortable because it requires us to sit within the darkness, oftentimes for a long time. And the only thing that's most uncomfortable out the darkness is the uncertainty and the voices and the fears that we have within us that start to 
rule our perceptions. And so your darkness is for you. It's for you to sit in. You know, the sun will come up again. Show me this Two of Cups. Seven of Pentacles with the Two of Cups. I'm going to pop that there. You have the King of Swords at the bottom of the deck for that. The Seven of Pentacles is a card of assessments, Taurus. It's very much your card. <laughs> um, the Seven of Pentacles is seeing what you've given to situations and seeing what they've given back. Seeing if you want to continue giving to things and, you know, how you want to pursue and persist and upright. This card says, this is a point of decision. What does this situation give back to us? And I feel here that this situation gives back a lot more than it may seem. I feel with kindred spirits and like-minded folks, even if you're not children, like you're able to unearth a lot here. And it comes through the honest exchange of experience and pain. And it comes through the wisdom that is an immediate byproduct of masking our pain. The King of Swords presents itself when we've used logic, we've used reason, and we've detached from our feelings. The Seven of Pentacles says, yes, we've done that. And what have we gotten so far? Maybe we've gotten ahead. Maybe we are in a good place in our life, but there's still some sort of like, you know, underlying energy that needs to be unearthed, accepted, loved, soothed. And here for the King of Swords to be showing up, this energy is one that shuts off their emotions. It's uncomfortable sometimes. Emotions can be very uncomfortable, Taurus. <sighs> And then when we hide ourselves from our feelings, sometimes that will also cause us to become rigid in our views. So just be mindful of that. What's under the King of Swords? The Knight of Swords. This is about communication. Sometimes communication about uncomfortable topics. Six of Cups with a kindred spirit. <laughs> Six of Cups with somebody who is soul material, soul energy, a soul imprint. I feel here that you have a new friend. I feel here that you have something that is, uh, whether or not it's on the way to love or romance or whatever, I feel here, Taurus, that you have somebody that confiding in can feel like gold. It's uplifting and healing. And if you don't have anybody like this in your life, then it's your turn and your choice and chance to be that friend to yourself, to be a friend to the darkness, to be a friend to the unearthed parts and the little kid in the dark. Be kind, be generous. The Six of Cups, this energy is about healing our past. It's about nostalgia, especially with the devil underneath it. This is about the attachments that we have. This is about the trauma that we undergo. High Priestess peeking through. That's the inner wisdom, the inner knowledge, the trusting of the self. It's listening to your inner guidance. You know, you get that guidance through experience. You get that guidance through your psychic <laughs> veil being thinned. You know, some of us that live in fear, live in fear for a reason. Being highly intuitive is sometimes scary. I can tell you that it's sometimes very scary to be a feeling human being in a world of zombies. Be available to the change that is available to you. And if there is no person in your life, be available to change in yourself and your experiences and your perceptions. There's only so many times that you can walk down the same street looking at the ground. At one point, you're going to have to look up and it's going to be a different view. You know, you might be walking the same path, but it's a different view. Keep your eyes out for the different viewpoints. Keep your eyes out for the shift in consciousness, awareness, and the change that you create through friends, through communication, through your connections, give back to yourself, especially if you're somebody that gives of yourself so freely and so lovingly. Give back that grace to yourself. I love you, Taurus. I hope that this reading is helpful for you. And an angel message? Sure. Uh, 
Assertiveness. The situation can be healed gently and with love, as you've requested, yet there's also a need for your strength and truthfulness with other people, with the other people involved. We will stand right behind you as you speak your truth, giving you strength and guidance in your words. It's the assertiveness, assertiveness to change, assertiveness to be honest. Here, underneath at the bottom of the deck, you have relationship. Your primary relationship is with yourself and God, and every other relationship follows from there. To attract, heal, or balance a relationship, then snuggle more closely with your loving creator. As you feel safe and loved within, so shall your real other relationships bloom and prosper. I feel that that is important here. I'll read this one last message. The ocean. The deep blue sea speaks to your soul, healing and soothing you. Even the act of imagining yourself dipping into its healing womb brings about desirable effects. Better yet, spend time physically near the ocean. Allow its power and beauty to wash away all cares and concerns. The ocean is also a symbol of emotion and the depths of our emotions because the ocean is kind of bottomless and so are we. And that's the scary part. <laughs> I love you guys. I hope that this is helpful. Feel free to like, share, subscribe. You have the power within yourself to change your lives for the better. And uh, yeah, do it. You're worth it. Take care.